on episode 76, we're asking the question, does your practice need to swipe right? Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to The 88 Show. This is the internet's only dental show where we are talking about what matters most in marketing. I'm your host, Joshua Scott, and this right here is episode 76, um, the year of the founding of our country, right? 1776, coming at you with a little American Independence Day. Completely irrelevant, but we are here on a Monday in the studio with the team here and introducing a new topic for the month. This is September. And so the topic that we're discussing here over the next two episodes is swipe right. And it's turning new patient calls into first dates, the art of that. And I'll tell you where this topic came from. Um, one of the things I've noticed this year is Look, you know, we're a marketing company, right? We're a dental marketing company. One of our jobs is to drive new patient phone calls to a dental practice. But what I've discovered is that successful marketing often creates some other, or probably exposes is a better word, um, some other problems. And so those that call volume all of a sudden creates issues with the front office, with answering them, with how uh, they're dealing with them, getting new patients scheduled. And so a uh, little statistic here for you, because I've, I've listened to hundreds of phone calls this year. Uh, it's been one of my jobs is to just scan and listen to phone calls because I'm trying to learn this side of it and just wanted to jump in um, into it. And so I've tracked them and out of every 100 phone calls, 62 of those get answered and 26 of those get scheduled. And so just, just so we're clear, these are marketing driven phone calls that we are spending money on, right? On average, I mean, it could be 15 bucks a phone call all the way up to 80. Uh, I mean, it could be higher, but that's probably the average spread there. Um, so we're spending money on these and 62 of them are getting answered. So the other math, uh, 38 of those are just going to voicemail and they're going to voicemail and not leaving a message and not calling back. So it's, it's their kind of, um, open-ended phone calls that don't get resolved. And then out of those 62 that are answered only 26. So that's about a third of the phone calls that get answered are getting scheduled. And so I began to realize this is a problem and we need to look into that. And so that's what today's topic is about because when we're talking about turning strangers into friends or family members or longtime patients in the practice, it's a very difficult uh, process. But I think if we, if we think about it, instead of turning them into friends or family members, what if it was just taking strangers and turning it into a first date, right? Like getting them to just swipe right. Like, let's see where this goes. Let's try it. And looking at it more from that perspective. And so recently I was with a uh, dental practice and we're working through this. And I said, guys, here's how we're going to do this. We are going to strip apart the entire new patient phone call. We're just going to like uh, kind of deconstruct it. But we're going to start with the values that should guide that conversation. What are the values that are most important to a new patient phone call? Let's start there because then we can build the script on top of it. Then we can decide how we're going to handle objections from that. Decisions need to be made. We go back to the values. And so on today's episode, I want to share with you the five values that we created that guide new patient phone calls. All right, so let's talk about the values of new patient phone calls and what should guide those. So number one is this phone call is a representation of the patient's experience in the practice. So they are the new patient's experience representative, right? And you know, the fact is some, if you look this up online, some studies will say you got seven seconds to make a good impression. Some studies say you got 12 seconds, but the fact is, Patients are making a snap judgment from the time that phone call starts. So you kind of got the greeting and the way you start that phone call and they're going to make decisions already about whether or not they'll even book an appointment. Okay. And at the end of the day, what's, what's crazy is that this person answering the phone, your team member 
is a, it, they represent the clinical skills of that doctor and that practice. Meaning if a new patient can call and within five minutes you can get that call booked and scheduled, uh, then awesome. That means you're efficient, that, that looks good. I mean, if the patient now feels like clinically you know what you're doing, you guys are experts. If it takes five minutes just to even explain insurance and then another five minutes to talk about money and getting the appointment scheduled, then all of a sudden the new patient's like, mm, I'm not sure, do these guys know what they're doing? Are they as good as, as it seems? And so that's where it comes down to. These positions, they're sales positions. And you may not like that and that may kind of hit you wrong, but when you're on the call with a new patient, your job is to get them into an appointment and that involves closing in sales. And so being a representation of that new patient experience that's value number one, okay? Second value is focus. It's focus. I don't know if I've met a front office team member who is not skilled in the art of multitasking. And so that's, well, that's awesome. I mean, it's amazing, really. Uh, when it comes to new patient phone calls, it can hurt the overall experience. I, I know most front office team members, I mean, you've got uh, you know new patient calls, you're trying to check somebody out, the doctor's asking for a financial arrangement to be printed, there's probably three or four things going on. But when that new patient phone call happens, we need to kick into active listening mode. And wh whatever that involves for you, I mean, it's turning away from the computer, picking up a pen, going to paper, learning their name, using it right away so you don't forget it, taking notes about that patient or, or putting notes in the computer during that time. There's a difference between multitasking and really actively listening to somebody. And so as amazing as you are at multitasking, this is one place where I'll tell you, stop, stop and actively focus on the patient, okay? So number two was focus. Number three, confidence. Look, the number one question a new patient is asking themselves when they're calling you is, am I making the right decision? They, they searched, they found you online or a friend referred you. They maybe haven't had a dental appointment in who knows how long. They pick up the phone call to call you. In their head, they're literally asking themselves, is this the right decision? Am I calling the right practice? And so therefore, the best thing you can do from the start is to reassure them, reaffirm that. So glad you called today. You're making the right decision by calling our office. Our doctors are amazing. You made the right decision. Those types of things, reaffirming them, giving them the confidence that yes, they're, they called the right place, they're in good hands. Um, that along with smiling, you know, they have that whole like, there's this whole sales technique, right? Of like when you're on the phone, you know, put a mirror in front of yourself and smile because it affects the way you answer the phone call. All that is completely true. Uh, you don't have to put the mirror in front of you because I think that that gets a little weird, you know, unless you want to. But the truth is like smile. It just makes everything better, like, like way, way better because you can hear that on the other ends of the phone call and just give patients confidence that yes, you're in the right place. So that's value number three. Value number four, let's talk about empathy. I think when it comes to healthcare, empathy overall is the number one value by far that any healthcare organization can communicate. And when I say that, the fact is you can have empathy, but you have to communicate empathy. And it's really putting yourself in somebody, somebody else's shoes, right? And it's saying things back to them on the phone call, like, I understand. There are many patients like that in your same situation. We have treated many patients like that as well. Our doctors are gentle and understanding and take the time to listen. Things like that, statements like those are tools that you can use that will communicate empathy of, because the fact is you may not know what type of position they're in and you may not even realize the amount of bravery that it took for them to actually pick up the phone and call you. There are lots of patients in that condition. And so being willing to, to empathize with them and to communicate that is a huge, huge value. Make sure when you're on these phone calls, you take time to include statements like that to communicate it. All right. So that's number four. Let's hit the last one. Value number five. It's coming down to insurance and money. That is what the new patient is asking on the phone 
from the start, right? Is, is let's be clear about insurance and let's be clear about money. And so my two rules when we're talking about this is number one, clarity is king. Clarity is king. Number two, honesty, she's the queen. <laughs> she's the queen. So you got clarity and honesty, man, they go hand in hand. And I think when it comes to insurance and payment and out-of-pocket expense, you need to be super clear and super honest about what that new patient can expect. And so if you're going to answer questions about, about insurance, I think we need to do it straightforward. There's a lot of verbal, um, like jujitsu type stuff happening out there where, you know, a patient asks a question and you're like, Wah! and you just like sidestep and you got these sweet moves. But at the end, what I see is patients come into the practice and because they weren't answered clearly and they have other expectations, the financial or the insurance arrangements don't match what they had in their head and now they're upset. And I would bet eight out of 10 bad reviews I see all stem from this right here. And so if you wanna diffuse bad reviews, man, be clear, be honest. And I think if somebody calls and says, you know, do you take MetLife insurance? And you wanna to say to them, yes, we submit to MetLife insurance. I think you need to like really define what that means. Like, so we are not in network with MetLife. We will submit your paperwork to them. Their fee schedule is different than ours. And so the majority of our patients in your situations may have a $30 copay at the time of the appointment. And I think it just needs to be very clear like that. And I know there's a lot of people that don't talk that way. It's get them into the practice, let them experience that, and they'll want to stay. But I don't see it happening like that in real life, like ever. A patient comes in, and if their understanding is that they don't have an out-of-pocket expense because you accept their insurance, they're probably going to be hacked off when they find out they got to pay 30, 40, 50 bucks. And so I think when it comes to insurance and money, be super clear, be super honest. And at the end of the day, those are the values that win. All right, guys, so that's it, man. It's values. Uh, everything comes back to values. Values are the foundation of everything. Values are what we make decisions from. Uh, I mean, the values come first before the script, before how we talk about insurance, before how we handle objections, before how we talk about money. Let's define the values first. So question of the episode before I leave you, what values do you think guide the new patient phone call? Maybe you like mine, maybe you've got some to add, maybe you disagree with some, that's all fair. I'd love to hear your thoughts, but what values do you think guide those conversations? Uh, this month's article, Swipe Right, you'll find that down below in the show notes as well. Uh, link it up, tell me what you think about that. Next episode, it's gonna be a fun one. We are actually going to play some real new patient phone calls. We're gonna talk about them, some good, some bad. And man, there's some ugly on there too. So come back for that. And guys, the best place to find me is on Instagram. You'll find that link down below at Joshua Scott. Connect with me there. That's it, man. Appreciate you being here. Episode 76 in the books. You feel good about it? All right, man, that's a wrap. See you guys.